They don't want to see me rise No They just want to see me fall When I be giving my all I'm just going to do it my way Hey, hey, everybody. This is Maude with Tantrum. Uh, bring you another video today. Uh, this is part one in a small series of how to create your own YouTube add-on the Tantrum way. Uh, I say that because this is using our add-on code for uh, the YouTube add-ons that's a little bit different than the others out there. It gives you a little bit more, well, a lot more flexibility on what you can do with it. The different... Uh, menus you can have you can have more than just the main menu without creating your own playlists or anything on youtube uh, and once you release your add-on you never have to do an update to it uh, to change your menus uh, to add new menu items or anything like that so this first part is going to be getting familiar with the add-on itself uh, and the files in it so we're going to jump right into this here and um, I'm going to have all links in the description for us. Uh, we're going to go to repo.tantrumtv.com slash download. Uh, that's the same URL you use to get our repo. And if you notice, there's a folder in it called YouTube Tutorial. And if you click on that, it's going to go into a folder with a zip file. So we want to go ahead and download that zip file. And I'm just going to download it uh, to my downloads folder here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click show in folder. All right. And if you notice there, uh, here it is. I'm going to go ahead and extract that out. I use 7-zip. You can use WinZip or Windows Extractor. doesn't matter. And I'm going to extract it out to its own folder here because there is some files in the root. All right. We're going to go in here and there's a couple folders and then some PSD files. Now, just so you know, uh, the PSD files are not required. Uh, they're just generic uh, fan art and icon files made in Photoshop that I'm including in the tutorial. Uh, if you don't have Photoshop, you can use GIMP uh, to open PSD files as well. Um, I think at one time they used to have a plugin installed in GIMP for that, but I think they've made it uh, native now. I'm not sure. Um, but the main thing is, if your fan art is 1920 by 1080 resolution, you're good. And the icon needs to be 512 by 512 for its resolution. Uh, you do that, you're good on both. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the uh, plugin files here. And even though um, all the PY files during the tutorial we're going to edit, um, most of them, you only have to edit the header that uh and it's just comments and that's just if you want to so you know there's only going to be one file we truly get in here and edit uh to change any of the code or variables for you uh, and that'll be it so we have the add-on.py which is what is triggered whenever you go into the add-on inside cody uh that's where the magic happens so um, next file here is the add-on.xml and this is the file where you set up your ID for the add-on, the name of it, the version, and put in your name there. Uh, your own description and summary down here, and that's what you do with that one. All right, the change log, if you want to keep a uh, record of your changes, you can put that in here. All right, of course, the fan art JPEG and the icon PNG. It's important to make sure that you keep them those formats. Uh, for compatibility all right our license file uh, as you can see here I use the beerware license uh, revision 42 basically says you can do whatever you want if you enjoy it buy me a beer that's pretty much it all right then of course what's new this is just a, a placeholder file for the news uh, link when you click on it inside the add-on, it'll download it, put it in there. All right, under resources, uh, we have the settings XML. Nothing to change in there. Uh, it's just a debug on and off. Uh, in case you want to implement any type of debug code in your in the add-on uh, down the road. All right, and in the lib folder, this is where our workhorse uh, files are. 
the global variables file here. This is where we're going to make all the changes later. Uh, the add-on name, where to look for uh, the menu files, things like that. Uh, there's actually only a few things you need to even change in there. All right, our IO file, uh, that's what reads those files from online. And then the menu file, and this is what generates each of the type of menu items, the playlist entries, the channel entries, uh, sub menus, things like that. Now, in each of these files, you know, the top is real, except for the global variables, the top is the only thing that you'll need to edit, and that's these three lines here, all right? Um, there's some lines down here in global variables, as I said, that'll be edited, but everything else is left alone, all right? So, after we do all those changes, we're going to look into the menu files, all right, which is right here. And it's just a main menu text file and a news file to get you started. Uh, we'll cover making submenus and all in later videos. Um, that way you can know how to uh, create as many submenus as you want. All right. Uh, we're going to cover what each of these lines mean, how to fill out the information for them, uh, so that you understand how it all works. Uh, trust me, it's honestly very simple. Um, I try to make this as easy as possible for everybody while still giving you as much of the ability to customize it as possible. All right. So we'll go ahead and close this out. Uh, your news file. Uh, that's where you can put in all the news for your users. Uh, there's a news and update link at the top of the add-on when you go into it. They click on it. This is what they're going to see. All right. So that's the purpose of that one. All right, and that's it uh, for the files. That's all there is. Uh, I promise this is going to be uh, some quick, uh, kind of short videos uh, in comparative to some of the others I've seen out there because uh, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, the menu files are the biggest thing, and uh, I'm going to have the video dedicated just to them so that you can understand how to uh, configure them to get the most out of them. Uh, how to create sub menus, how to create uh, searchable menu items so that when you click on it, it loads up content from YouTube as though you searched for it. So you can add dynamic content that way uh, if you know what search terms that you're wanting to using that'll kick back specific results. Uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and cover all that, like I said, in future videos. Uh, that's it for this one. Uh, this is one just to, to kind of get you going, get you started, get the files, uh, and we'll cover uh, the web hosting, uploading the files and all um, in a separate video uh, with the editing of the menu. Uh, the next video is going to be covering customizing the add-on for yourself, uh, setting the title and all that, uh, and then getting it installed into Kodi so that you can start working with it. All right, I'll see you then. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a comment down below, click like in the corner, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.